In this video, we'll take a look at triggering a flow from a system table. So I'm here in Workflow Studio. I'm in a, uh, a, bre a fresh uh, flow here. And um, I want to add the sys import set table um, as a trigger in here. So out of the box, uh, it does not allow you to do that. Uh, you go in here and you look for it and you can't find it. Um, now, I did some Googling and uh, when I had this problem originally, and so there is this uh, article here on uh, selecting, um, it's an interesting spelling of the email table, sys, sys underscore email or email and other system tables in Flow Designer. Um, so there's a system property here, allowed system tables, and you can add them in to that system property and then they will appear. And I thought, oh, okay, that'll fix my problem. Um, however, that did not fix my problem. When I added uh, tables into this allowed system tables, it then allows you to add them in here in an action, right? If I'm in a lookup record, I can go here and go uh, sys import set. Um, however, if I am uh, up here, uh, it would not allow that to happen. So to get the uh, table to appear in, in this list up here, there's actually another system property that needs to be added. Uh, so let's go take a look at that here. It's this uh, glide record watcher table dot blacklist. So by default, uh, many of the system tables are left out of the, um, are, are not in the, are not record watched. Uh, they're left out of the record watcher. So basically you can't trigger anything off of them because there's nothing watching uh, when they're updated. So the way to get around that is to add this uh, property. Um, you put the list of tables that they recommend. So uh, all of this comes from a knowledge article um, that you actually have to be logged in uh, to uh, support in order to be able to see. So I have the link, I'll, I'll post the link in the description of the video. Um, and you can go to that link and log in and get this list. And so then you basically take your table out of that list. So I've done that with the sys import set was on the list. I took it out of that list and I put it in, uh, I, so I, yeah, I took it out of that list. So now if we go over here, we can see this, uh, sys import set, right? Appears in here. Um, so the purpose of this video is really just to, uh, maybe you stumble on this when you're, uh, having this problem like I did, and I had to put in a ticket and, uh, you know, they, they got back to me and told me about that knowledge article, but otherwise there's no uh, information on this topic. Um, so that's it. They do mention in that article, or at least they mentioned it in the, um, I think it's mentioned in the article, but they definitely mentioned in the ticket that there could be performance consequences from doing something like this. Um, so I have never disclaimer, I've never tried this in production and I probably wouldn't do it in production, uh, because I would be nervous about, I'd have to take a look around at the sys import set and see how busy that table is, um, before doing something like this. And I would definitely be nervous about doing this on a busier table, you know, definitely not any log tables or anything like that. Um, so just a disclaimer there, definitely, a use your own judgment on that, uh, but that's how you do it. 